Hey everybody, and welcome to Aldersgate Online. No matter where you're watching, we're so excited that you've decided to spend the next 40 minutes or so with us today. These next 40 minutes will consist of worship, teaching, and discussion questions at the end for some reflection. Before we get started, we would love it if you would take a moment right now to pull out your phone and share this online experience. Listen, one of the most effective ways that we have as a community to share this amazing message of hope is through technology. You can share this on whatever platform you find yourself on, whether that's YouTube or Facebook or Church Online. When you do, you're helping us spread this amazing message of hope that we have to a world that desperately needs it. Everything that we do happens because of your generosity. You are such an incredibly generous church and so many of you give sacrificially every single week and we want to thank you for that. We also want to invite you if you haven't yet partnered with us, you can do that by heading over to aldersgate.info. We also want to help you connect with others within this awesome community we have here at Aldersgate. There are a couple of ways you can do that. The first is just by watching our online experience like you're doing right now. We have online hosts every week, so feel free to connect with us in the chat. You can also send us your prayer request at any time during our service today. We'd love to be able to pray with you and help you if we can. The next way is having a watch party. Maybe invite your neighbors or other family members over to watch our online experience and join in a discussion together. Of course, you can always join us at one of our in-person services here on 103rd in Indiana every Sunday. If you have any questions or would like to fill out our digital connect card, you can text us at the number on the screen or by visiting aldersgate.info. Thanks again for being with us today. It's time for our online experience to begin right now. We're studying together through a sermon series called We Believe, and we're using the Apostles' Creed to guide the sermon series. So join me in reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We've talked about we believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. Today, Jeremy Barbie is going to give us a word on we believe in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. Hey, welcome. We're glad you're joining us from uh, wherever you are, whenever you are, whether you're watching this on a Sunday morning or you're watching this on a Wednesday afternoon. We just invite you to step in with us. We've been in the middle of a series called We Believe, just kind of processing through the basic foundations of what we believe here at Aldersgate, what most Christians believe, what all Christians should be striving towards in the person of God, the person of Jesus. And this week we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit who he is, who he's not, how he works, and how our relationship with him drives our relationship with the Father and the Son at the same time. So this morning, Holy Spirit, we just invite you in. 
This afternoon, we seek your face. This evening, we long to hear from you. spend time with us. Let us hear your voice.
feel the home. You're here and I know you're moving. I'm here and I know you'll feel me. feel the room. You're here and I know you're moving. I'm here and I know you'll feel me. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you're moving. I'm here and I know you'll feel me. And you 
Hi, welcome to week three of our series, We Believe. In week one, we talked about God. Week two, we talked about Jesus. And today we're gonna to talk about the Holy Spirit, the third member of the Trinity. Um, and so part of our We Believe series, we're going through the Apostles' Creed um, and he, heading on each one of those different points um, over the next few weeks. So today, as we talk about the Holy Spirit, um, let's open up a word of prayer. Father, as we seek you, as we listen to your word, as you listen to what you're saying to us today, let us be receptive to you. Let us be receptive to who you are and allow your spirit to move in and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. So for those who don't know me, my name is Jeremy. I'm part of the worship team here at Aldersgate. Um, I grew up in a charismatic Pentecostal church. And so for me, when I had the opportunity to talk about the Holy Spirit and what that meant, I'm like, oh, I've got this. I've got a lot of experience with the Holy Spirit, both good and bad. Um, so as a kid growing up, my thought of the Holy Spirit was all about the very expressive forms of worship, very flamboyant. And what I learned growing up was the Holy Spirit equaled tongues. So how do you know if you had the Holy Spirit? You spoke in tongues. If you didn't speak in tongues, you probably didn't have the Holy Spirit. Well, that's what I learned. That's what my teacher my church taught me uh, growing up, but then I learned that actually the Holy Spirit was so much more than just speaking in tongues. And I learned as I got older, as I started reading more about the Bible, that the, speaking in tongues is just one aspect, really one evidence of um, being empowered with the Holy Spirit. Um, and so I want us to go back and talk a little bit about what it looks like um, in the Bible. Um, sometimes if you think about the Holy Spirit, you may have thought of him being as the boogeyman or kind of the, you know, kind of, you hear the term the Holy Ghost instead of spirit, which to me makes him seem a little kind of more spooky or something. Uh, and so sometimes the Holy Spirit gets a bad rap. You know, people are like, is that like your crazy uncle? You're not really sure what's going on or how to handle him. But see, what I remembered is in the Bible, in Acts, it talks about on the day of Pentecost, they were all in one accord. Um, they all came together and the Holy Spirit descended and came upon them. And so I was like, man, that's amazing. That's awesome. But was the Holy Spirit just there in the New Testament? Was the Holy Spirit just there after Jesus rose from the dead? See, we see in Genesis chapter one, starting in verse two, that says the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the earth. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And so we see the Holy Spirit was actually there from the beginning. The Holy Spirit didn't just show up in the book of Acts, didn't just show up in the New Testament. The Holy Spirit is actually there as the earth, as the world is being created, as you and I were being created. Numbers 27, 18 says, So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him. And so we see there that the Holy Spirit dwells in his followers, dwells in the followers of God. Psalm 51, 11 says, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. We also see in 1 Samuel 
chapter 10, verse 10. It says, when they came to Gibeah, behold, a group of prophets met him and the spirit of God rushed upon him and he prophesied among them. So that's something that we actually see also is in the Old Testament, a lot of times the spirit will come onto someone and it'll leave someone. And so the spirit, it kind of is moving back and forth the whole time. And so it's not just stagnant. It's not um, just still, don't, you always, don't always know if you're going to have the spirit today or not. First Samuel 16, uh, verses 12 through 13 says, And he sent and brought him in, and now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And he's talking about David here. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. And so we see also that the spirit would come upon leaders. And so in the Old Testament, we see a lot of the spirit being there at the beginning of time, being there with creation. We see the spirit um, empowering uh, being and dwelling in his followers and God's followers. And we also see the spirit coming upon both prophets and leaders as well as departing from them. So when we get to the New Testament, the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit interacts with humanity changes. So we see Jesus has come through. He has been on this earth. He was born of a virgin, lived, died on the cross, three days later rose from the dead. And then as he was on the earth, it says that he was on the earth um, for a while after he rose from the dead, met with his apostles, and he actually told them this in Acts um, chapter 1, starting in verse 4. While staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And so Jesus promised that the Spirit was going to come with them, that the Spirit was going to be there, that He wasn't going to leave them alone, but He was going to send a comforter. He was going to send the Holy Spirit to be with them and for them to wait for the Spirit to arrive. And so in the next chapter, in chapter 2 of the book of Acts, we actually see the Spirit has arrived. And it says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so I don't know how much time actually passed from Acts 1 until Acts 2, but we know that the apostles, that the followers of Jesus Christ were there, they were waiting, they were in the upper room. They were seeking God. They were praying. They were fasting, spending time before him. They heard the promise of the Holy Spirit from Jesus. They believed the promise of the Holy Spirit from Jesus. And we see in chapter two that the Holy Spirit came upon them and descended on them as if fire from heaven. We also see that in John chapter 14, um, verse 16 says, and I will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. And then skipping down to verse 26, we see, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. And so we see in John that the Holy Spirit, one of his roles was to be the helper and to be the helper for us, helper for followers of Christ. We then see in John chapter 16, verse eight, it says, and when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. And so one of the roles, another role of the Holy Spirit, not only is helper, but also convicts. And so the Holy Spirit convicts us of wrong, convicts us of when we're doing things um, that are not pleasing to God, not pleasing uh, to being a follower of Christ. We see in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says, 
Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are bought with the price. So glorify God in your, in your body. And so in those two passages, we see that the Holy Spirit dwells in humans. It dwells in God's people. And so in the Old Testament, we saw that the Holy Spirit would come upon people and depart. It would leave and depart. But here in the New Testament, we see that the Holy Spirit, when it comes on you, when the Holy Spirit comes into you, it dwells and lives there forever. It doesn't depart from you, but it stays with you. In 2 Corinthians 3.17, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so the Holy Spirit provides freedom. And so we see the Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit uh, dwells in humans. The Holy Spirit provides freedom and the Holy Spirit is with us, empowering us. Now, I talked earlier about um, gifts of the Spirit. And for me, speaking in tongues is the only gift that I learned about as a kid. And that was the main gift. And so the way that I moved from thinking that speaking in tongues was the only evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit to understanding that there's actually more than one gift was through reading the Bible and specifically 1 Corinthians 12. And it says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. And to one is given through the spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another, the utterance of knowledge, according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. And so the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not just tongues, but they're wisdom, they're knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, spiritual discernment, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Now, I want you to hear this. Don't compare your spiritual gifts with someone else's. I'm going to say that again. Don't compare your spiritual gift, gift with someone else's. I know for me as a kid growing up, and even as an adult, I always felt I needed to compare myself to someone else. Like, I would be more spiritual if I did what that person did. Or I'd look like I was closer to Jesus if I did what that person did. But see, the Bible says that we each have unique gifts. God has given each of us unique gifts and special gifts. And God has empowered us to use those gifts for His glory. So I want to leave you with this passage here. Um, it's one of those that I think is important as we talk about the Holy Spirit, as we move forward in our relationship with God. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And so I wanna encourage you today that as you're seeking after God, as you're seeking after the Holy Spirit, seek after the gifts. Seek after the gifts that God has given you. Look into the gifts that God has given you because God has called you for a purpose. God has called you to be one of his children. God has called you to do mighty and powerful things. And through the Holy Spirit, you'll be the person that God has called you to be. Do the things God has called you to do and you will be mighty and powerful through his spirit. Will you pray with me? Father, we ask for your spirit to move right now. Move in people's lives and their hearts as you bring change to them. Convict us of wrong. Fill us with hope. Be our helper. Be the one that we are constantly listening to as we go through our days. And so, Father, now we ask for your presence to move in might, for your spirit to move in power, for your presence to flow right now through every person that's watching, that the gift you've given to them will be revealed to them in mighty and beautiful ways. 
And Lord, use those gifts for the betterment of the kingdom, for the empowering of your people, for making your church better as they love you, as they reach out to you and work towards becoming better followers of you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as you go through your day, as you go through your week, I just want to challenge you and encourage you, seek after God. Seek after the gifts that he's given you. Seek after what he wants to do for you in your life and take time to be quiet before him. Take time to listen to God. Take time to let the Holy Spirit speak to you and speak truth into your life. So go in peace. Thanks again for joining us at Aldersgate Online today. We are so honored that you worshiped with us, and I hope that you have been inspired and you have been challenged. Most of all, I hope you've had an encounter with Jesus and He's transformed your life today. He does that through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jeremy gave us some great teaching on the Holy Spirit today, and I pray that you will take these words and let them set into your soul and let God continue to speak to you about the Comforter, the one that had to come, that, that speaks to us, that guides us, that gifts us. I pray that you are using the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given you. And I pray that you are challenged today to take your next step in the power of the Holy Spirit. Join us again next week as we'll continue this We Believe series talking about the Bible. Until then, thanks again.